This video is for the solutions to the Leaving Cert Business 2016 short questions. So I'll take you through the answers now. So question number one, um, you were asked what do the following letters stand for? So IDA is Industrial Development Authority. PLC is a public limited company. Um, SME is Small and Medium Enterprises. ROI is Return on Investment. And CEO is Chief Executive Officer. Uh, question two, so this is from the Industrial Relations chapter in Unit 1. You have to define the term trade dispute. So is any dispute between employers and workers that is connected to the terms of employment, so the contract of employment. And two types of ind official industrial action available to employees involved in industrial dispute with employers. So uh, the types you can say, well, official strike is when you have your secret ballot and there's majority vote, you have to give seven days notice and you then can pick it outside the premises. So primary pick it outside your premises if it's uh, connected to your employer, or if you can secondary pick it if the um, another business is involved in the industrial dispute with uh, your original employer. Um, work to rule, only do your contracted hours and nothing else, like a teacher not taking extracurricular um, activities or sports after school. And um, other ones you could mention there is having an overtime ban um, or a token stoppage. Question three, you have to write true or false after each of the following statements. So inflation refers to the decrease in the cost of living from one year to the next. Uh, that's false. That would be deflation. An increase in the value of the euro against sterling has a negative impact on Irish exports to the UK. That would be true. Decrease in unemployment results in an increase in PAY revenue for the government. That would be uh, true as well because um, there's a decrease in unemployment, which means more people um, are now working paying PAYE. High interest rates stimulate business expansion. That's false because there's less incentives then for um, businesses to borrow money because they have to pay more interest rates. Um, and a recession represents an upturn in the economy and an increase in demand. That's false. Um, it means you're producing less goods and services for two consecutive quarters. So um, less people are now working, there's less demand in the economy, etc., etc. Um, for the next question was an insurance question, unit four. So you had to match the uh, terms to the explanations. So insurable interest, um, you have to benefit or gain from an existence and suffer from a loss. So that's C. Um, average clause then is D. So if you underinsure something, um, there's a partial loss. So you only get a percentage of the um, value of compensation if you don't insure something fully. Uh, subrogation three is F. So once compensation has been paid out, any legal right or salvage rights pass to the insurance company. Uh, contribution uh, for that's A. So applies if an item is insured against the same risk with more than one company. Um, and indemnity then is B. So you cannot make a profit from insurance. And the letter there, uh, E, we must disclose all material facts or state all material facts about the item being insured. In other words, you must tell the truth when applying for insurance. Uh, that will be utmost good faith, which is not listed there. Uh, so next question then, you have to talk about the debt to equity ratio for Lalco LTD. So debt is um, like borrowings from the bank, loans, things like that. And equity is the money inside the business. So debt to equity would be the loan to the reserves and ordinary share capital. So the loan first, 700,000 is to uh, the 220,000, 130,000 added together. So 700,000 is to uh, 350,000. So the answer there is uh, two is to one because the answer is the gearing ratio. They want the answer as a ratio. Um, so you have to outline whether Lalco LTD is highly or lowly geared and a possible effect this result has on the business. So they're very much highly geared because it's twice as much debt capital as equity. So um, you know, a business does not want to be relying as much on their uh, long-term loans as reserves and ordinary share capital because that money has to be paid back if the business was to be failing. So that's not a very good position to be in. So there could be high interest payments because you have to pay money back to the bank, low dividend payments to your investors and um, may impact on your ability to borrow in the future as well. So, you know, that's um, just worrying for that business. Two features of job production. So this is when you have your, your job, your batch, your mass. So job production is the one-off uh, production. So generally that will require highly skilled people doing the jobs, highly skilled labor. So the orders there will be customized. Um, you know, the production generally requires advanced machinery, so it should be very, very costly because it's like a very highly skilled job. Um, so highly skilled labor may have to pay the worker an awful lot more money as well to do that task. Um, for the next question then, uh, question seven, so complete the missing figures in the tree and shaded areas of the table. 
So um, when you're doing these, it's always exports minus um, imports. So balance of trade is visible exports minus visible imports. So uh, that's why it's 70 minus 105 would be a deficit of 35 uh, billion there. Um, 90 minus something is 25. So the missing figure will be 65. And um, something minus 110 gives you your 30 deficit. So that answer there would be 80, 80 minus 110. Explain the term invisible exports and provide one example with reference to the Irish economy. So exports are goods leaving the country. So these are invisible, which means they're services. So um, because it's invisible, it's a service. If it was visible, it would be a good. So these are services sold to foreign countries causing money to come into the country. So, for example, tourists coming to Tampa Bay are, are using Irish services and bringing money into the uh, country. Outline two methods of expanding a product life cycle and one example to illustrate your answer. You could update a product to include new features, like when uh, the iPhone XS has uh, new features or any iPhone um, that comes out. You could change your pricing strategy, you know, offer discounts like 10% off for students and um, hopefully they buy more. So new features on an iPhone that are different to previous models would be an example there. The distinction between VAT and corporation tax. So VAT is a tax on goods and services. Um, standard rate, 23% paid by both customers and businesses. With COVID, that rate uh, went to 21%. Uh, corporation tax is tax on companies' profits. Uh, it's 12.5%, which is huge in attracting FDI, which is foreign direct investment into Ireland. That is one of the most competitive in the world. So our um, corporation tax is hugely beneficial for um, our economy. And question 10 then, 10, the flowchart states the role of the institutions involved in the EU decision-making process. So you have to fill in the names of these uh, institutions, A, B, and C. So A is the European Commission, B is the European Parliament, and C is the Council of EU. So there are the solutions to the 2016 short questions.